and welcome to the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. As some of you may already know, recently, like a week ago, my gelding Dakota was diagnosed with suspensory desmitis. We did a lameness evaluation, which pinpointed which limb was affected. And then we moved on to do an ultrasound where the diagnosis was confirmed. Because Dakota is a senior citizen now, and he is semi-retired, we decided to go the conservative route for treatment. We elected not to rush into surgery to fix this injury. Dr. Anderson then created a protocol for him for the next three months, which involves hand walking increasing by five minutes every week. So this week we are walking intentionally for five minutes. We will then ultrasound him again and reassess how his healing journey is going. So today we're going to talk about this common yet often misunderstood condition in horses. And whether you're a horse owner, rider, or just someone who loves these animals, it is important to know about suspensory desmitis, what it is, how to spot it, and what you can do if your horse is affected. So let's dive in. Suspensory desmitis is a condition involving inflammation or injury of the suspensory ligament, which is a key structure in a horse's limb. The suspensory ligament runs from just below the knee or hock and extends down to the fetlock. It supports the joint and helps to prevent overextension. This ligament plays a crucial role in the horse's movement especially in activities involving high impact, like jumping or racing or even reining. When the ligament becomes inflamed or damaged, it can lead to lameness and significant pain, which is what we saw in Dakota. He was out playing with his friends in the pasture. They were galloping around and being silly, and I watched him do a sliding stop and then pivot on his rear end. It was really abrupt and caused some concern and obviously um, I was right to be concerned because he came up lame the next day. Suspensory desmitis can be caused by several factors and one of the most common is overuse or strain and that's often seen in horses that participate in intense training or high impact sports. Repeating the stress can cause micro tears in the ligament and that leads to inflammation. Sometimes trauma, like a kick or a fall, can also injure the suspensory ligament. Additionally, it can often, and can, or can, not often, but can be caused by conformation issues like long pasterns or dropped fetlocks. This can predispose a horse to this condition due to the extra strain on that ligament or a ligament. Sometimes something as simple as working on uneven or unsuitable surfaces can increase the risk of injury. So, how can you tell if your horse might have suspensory desmitis? The most obvious sign would be lameness, which can range from mild to absolutely severe, which is what happened in Dakota's case. You might notice swelling, yep, and heat, yep, around the area of the suspensory ligament, and the horse may react with pain when you touch this area. Changes in the horse's gait, such as a shortened stride or even a reluctance to move weight on the affected limb are also common indications. Early detection is crucial. So if you notice any of these signs, it's best to consult your veterinarian, which we did, like, Dr. Anderson was there within 24 hours. Diagnosing this. Well, to diagnose suspensory desmitis, your vet is going to have to perform a thorough physical examination. He'll check, he or she will check for signs of pain, swelling, and lameness. An ultrasound is one of the most effective tools for diagnosing this condition. It can reveal the extent of inflammation or damage in the ligament. In more complex cases, an MRI or x-rays might be used to get a clearer picture and to rule out other potential issues such as bone involvement. It was very helpful for me even to see the images of what was going on 
with Dakota. It was clear that um, there was a strain or a sprain, no tears. Thank God he had absolutely no tears in the ligament. So that was good. I was happy for that. Oh, now on to the treatment for suspensory desmitis. You'll focus on reducing inflammation so that you can allow that ligament to heal and rest is critical. It often requires weeks, sometimes months of reduced activity. And depending on your horse's injury, the severity of it, um, that's, that's what's going to dictate your, your, um, rehabilitation protocol going forward. Uh, cold therapy like ice packs or cold hosing can help. It definitely did with Dakota. It can help reduce the swelling and, and, and the pain in the early stages of the injury. Then there is the use of anti-inflammatory medications. So your vet may prescribe them to manage the pain. And in some cases, some supportive bandaging and controlled exercise, such as hand walking, can aid in recovery. So he did prescribe Equiox for Dakota. It has not come in yet. It's such a slow process sometimes to get my prescriptions for him. But in the meantime, I was giving him Banamine while he still had heat and swelling. We did the cold hosing, anti-inflammatory. It, it took... 48 hours and then heat and swelling gone, gone. He's not even gimpy anymore, but still we are being very conservative here and very, um, cautious. So they talk about, um, possibly introducing shockwave therapy, which can stimulate healing, which I will do with Dakota. I'll call my girl Bobby from Equine Sports and she will do his PMF therapy. That always helps. Uh, in severe cases, surgical options may be considered. We did discuss that. Not a candidate right now. Doesn't have to be. Those are typically reserved for chronic or non-responsive conditions. So we'll revisit that option in three months when we do another lameness eval and ultrasound on Dakota. So what's the prognosis? With early diagnosis and proper management, many horses will recover quite well and return to their previous levels of activity. However, severe or chronic cases might lead to persistent lameness, which will limit your horse's athletic capabilities. To prevent suspensory desmi desmitis, it's a mouthful, it's essential to condition your horse gradually. Avoid sudden increases in your horse's workload, ensure proper hoof care, and be mindful of the surfaces that you're working your horses on. Suspensory desmitis can absolutely be a challenging condition to deal with, but with the right knowledge and approach, it is manageable. If you suspect your horse might be affected, consult your veterinarian as soon as possible so that you can get a proper diagnos diagnosis and treatment plan. Honestly, I was grateful to have the ultrasound done at the same time we did the flex test and the lameness eval because I wanted to see exactly what was wrong with Dakota, right? I don't want to guess and I would certainly not want to make something worse. So getting the proper diagnosis, having that ultrasound done, honestly, it's not cheap, but you know what? I have peace of mind. I know exactly what we're dealing with. We were able to draw up a rehabilitation rehabilitation plan for Dakota right away and get into it. And I honestly feel like that is what has already been helping him one week later. And it has only been one week so far. He's doing great. Well, I want to thank you for watching and remind you to please, if you find the videos that I publish um, to be helpful, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, you'll continue to receive more information on horse health and wellness because your horse's well-being is my top priority. And until next time, take care.